I've been using Apple's iPad Mini 5 for the last two weeks, and I've realized that it's currently the best tablet on the market for gaming, topping every Android tablet and iPad for a few different reasons, which I'll get to in just a minute. It's basically the same iPad as the new iPad Air, but in a smaller package. The display is much improved from the iPad Mini 4, with 500 nits of brightness, True Tone technology, and P3 wide color gamut for incredible color accuracy for photo editing. And it now supports the Apple Pencil for taking notes, drawing, and much more, adding tremendous value compared to the old iPad Mini 4, which is priced at the same $400. You really get so much more value with the new iPad Mini 5, especially since you're going from the A8 processor in the Mini 4 to the A12 in the Mini 5, which comes directly from the iPhone XS and XS Max. So you're getting iPhone XS performance for only $400, and if you compare it to the chips you get in the best Android tablets out there, it completely blows them out of the water. In Geekbench 4's single core test, the iPad Mini 5 basically triples the scores of the Android tablets, and it's the same story for the multi-core test tripling most of the scores and almost doubling the score of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S4, which retailed at $780 but has quickly gone down to $530, still more expensive than the iPad Mini 5. And finally, in Antutu's graphics benchmark, which is more accurate for gaming performance, the iPad Mini 5 again easily outperforms the Android tablets, almost doubling the score of the Galaxy Tab S4. And that's not the only difference. Many people know that iPads are more reliable, perform better over time, and hold their value much better than Android tablets. Samsung's $400 Galaxy Tab S5e is also coming soon, and it's actually packing a similar or slower chip than the Tab S4, so the iPad Mini 5 is going to be the clear winner in terms of performance for 2019. Yes, the iPad Mini 5 is more expensive than some of those Android tablets, but trust me, you won't regret spending more. The iPad will give you years of reliable performance. But how is it better than the rest of Apple's current iPad lineup? For starters, the iPad mini's size and weight are perfect for comfortably holding in your hand. For everything from browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, reading eBooks, taking notes, drawing, taking it on the go, and especially for gaming. The rest of the iPads, even the 2018 budget iPad, are heavier and much larger making them less comfortable to hold. For playing games, your hands will get tired over time, and you don't really get that with the iPad Mini 5. It basically packs all the iPad you'll ever need in a perfectly compact form factor. Now you might be asking, why don't I just get the cheaper 2018 iPad instead? Well, there are a few drawbacks with that iPad, mainly with the display, and I have a detailed video comparing them if you want to learn more. But there's also a significant difference in gaming performance. Take Fortnite, for example. The 2018 iPad can only run the game at 30 frames per second on medium graphics. Not only that, but in-game, the graphics are noticeably worse, you'll get dropped frames so it won't be perfectly smooth, and the display is very reflective and not as bright, which can get pretty annoying. The iPad Mini 5 runs Fortnite at 60 frames per second on high settings, and it's incredibly smooth. No noticeable dropped frames, no issues with reflectivity, and you can play for hours thanks to the small and light form factor. Now what about the 2019 iPad Air and 2018 iPad Pro? Well, the iPad Air is basically a larger version of the iPad Mini 5. There's literally no difference in performance. The 2018 iPad Pro is definitely more powerful than the iPad Mini 5 but it's also twice as expensive. It's fairly large, so it's not very comfortable for long gaming sessions, and it's overkill for basically every game currently available on the App Store. How? Well, in Fortnite, it's limited to the exact same graphic settings as the iPad Mini 5, and it runs it just as smooth, with no benefits at all, even with all that extra performance. The story's the same in other games like Asphalt 9. You get 60 frames per second at maxed out graphics, and it runs perfectly smooth, on both the iPad Pro and the iPad Mini 5. I also played some PUBG and maxed out the graphics on both iPads. I mean, max everything. HDR, since Ultra HDR isn't available yet, Ultra frame rate, anti-aliasing enabled, and auto-adjust graphics disabled. The iPad Pro ran everything perfectly, except it didn't use up the whole display. Just like on Fortnite, there are black bars all the way around that don't get used. Either way, I managed to score the best rating in the game, and I won my first match ever. On the iPad Mini 5, it also ran the game perfectly with maxed out settings. Everything was super smooth, no issues at all, but it was much more comfortable to hold in the hand compared to the iPad Pro. This time, I scored an SS+. 
not bad for my first two matches. So from those three graphically demanding games, we can see that the extra power of the iPad Pro isn't really being used compared to the iPad Mini 5. And until we get some new and very graphically demanding games on iOS, there won't be much of a difference in gaming. Of course, you'll see the difference in tasks like video editing, but the average user honestly won't be able to tell the difference in performance. And that's why I'm calling the iPad Mini 5 the best gaming tablet in 2019. And for only $400, it's a really great deal for what you get. And it'll give you years of reliable performance for all of your iPad needs. Now, if the display is too small for your liking, you can pay $100 more for the new iPad Air. It's basically the same exact iPad, except with a larger 10.5 inch display and a smart connector for Apple's smart keyboard. That's it. We'll have links to all the best deals on these iPads in the video description below. And if you're having trouble choosing which one to buy, click that button to see our ultimate comparison guide and hit subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.